Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about the newly elected leader of the British Labour Party, Keir Starmer, and the five things that the Labour Party needs to do to win the next election. Sir Keir Starmer has been elected as the new leader of the British Labour Party with 56% of the vote. But who is Keir Starmer? In what direction is he going to take the Labour Party? How will Labour recover from the worst electoral defeat since 1935? And how will it respond to the Corona crisis? And what does Labour need to do to win the next election? So who is Keir Starmer? In short summary, he was a lawyer and former head of the Crown Prosecution Service. When Jeremy Corbyn was leader, he was shadow Brexit secretary, who orchestrated Labour's Brexit strategy, or lack thereof. He is strongly pro-remaining in the European Union, and while he's definitely a left-winger and supported by many trade unions, he is nowhere near as radical as Corbyn, which is seen as a good thing after the disastrous election result in December. Keir Starmer now has the monumental task of rebuilding the Labour Party, and there are some good signs. In the leadership contest, he won 56% of the vote, but he won 78% among those who recently joined the Labour Party. And he also has support from the older members who were there before the Corbyn era. This is a positive sign for Keir Starmer being able to expand the Labour Party beyond its radical base. The challenge for Keir Starmer is how to unite the university-educated, liberal, metropolitan, middle-class Labour voters with the traditional working class northern Brexit supporting Labour voters. You see, the Labour Party used to be the party of the working class, but in the last election the Conservatives actually won among working class voters, something that would have been unthinkable in the past. So here are the five things that Labour must do to win the next election. Number one, is of course getting past Brexit. Now that Brexit is happening for sure, Labour must accept the result, but offer an alternative vision for a post-Brexit Britain. A Labour Brexit. A Lexit, if you will. A Brexit that, for example, maintains protections for workers' rights that existed when Britain was still in the EU. And while it's positive that Keir Starmer said that we should move past Brexit, look at this video where he struggles to answer a basic question about whether he will campaign to rejoin the EU. You can guarantee that the UK will not be rejoining the EU. Can you make that guarantee? The, the, the argument about a second referendum was blown away uh, in the last election that we've just had. So the focus now has to be on two things. The first is, what is the relationship with the EU? But I think can it should you be make a that close... guarantee? Well, uh, I, I... Instead of stumbling over his words, he should have just given a straight no. And this exposes further weaknesses with Keir Starmer's Brexit position. He's the one who convinced Jeremy Corbyn to campaign for a second referendum, instead of accepting the referendum result and fighting for a better Brexit deal. And this backfired. People saw Labour as undemocratic traitors and as condescending, telling people that they didn't know who they voted for and not respecting the referendum result. On top of that, by trying to play the middle, they ended up pissing off both Brexit and Remain voters. Look, although the majority of Labour supporters support remaining in the EU, a good one-third supported Brexit, and those people are concentrated in the northern working-class seats that Labour needs to win the election. It cannot win without those people, and so Labour needs to accept the Brexit result while still offering an alternative vision to the Conservatives. Number two, is coronavirus. Corona is going to be a huge challenge for Labour because of something called the rally around the flag effect, which is when people stand behind their leader in a time of crisis, even if they disagree with them. And so what you see is that Boris Johnson and the Conservatives have surged in the polls to 52%, their highest rating in years, whereas Labour is lagging behind at just 29%. Now luckily for Labour, the next election is in four years, 
so they have time. But in essence, Labour must hold the Conservative government accountable and be critical of their handling of the coronavirus without over-politicizing everything and seeming too partisan. And on that front, Keir Starmer has shown positive signs. Under my leadership, we will engage constructively with the government, not opposition for opposition's sake, not scoring party political points. Look, there's a lot to criticize on Boris Johnson's handling of the corona crisis. The flawed logic of herd immunity, the fact that they're not testing enough, as well as the economic support for workers and businesses. Heck, healthcare workers have to wear plastic bags because there isn't enough PPE and because of cuts to the NHS made by the conservatives over the years. And once the corona crisis is over, Labour will have a lot to say about rebuilding. After the Second World War, Labour came with a grand vision to rebuild the country and reward everyone for their collective effort during the war. And this allowed Labour to sweep to victory and introduce things like free education, mass housing and the National Health Service. Labour could take the same approach after Corona. The crisis has shown that austerity cuts to the healthcare system have only made things worse and all the people who helped to fight this crisis could benefit from the kind of public spending that Labour would bring. Labour is seen as the party of healthcare. After all, it was Labour who created the NHS. They need to bring this message home and show the British people that they have a bold but realistic plan for post-corona Britain. Number three, Labour needs to become electable again. This means finding a balance between the far-left politics of Jeremy Corbyn and the sell-out neoliberalism of Tony Blair. Labour policies like raising taxes on the rich have 64% support, while nationalising the railways has 56% support. On the other hand, 53% see Labour's policies under Jeremy Corbyn as too expensive and too unrealistic. In short, they need a strong social democratic pro-worker agenda that is seen as realistic and addressing the issues faced by the majority of the British people. But people were turned off by the more extreme sides of Corbynism. You can't say things like... Suppose some people will judge that on balance, Ma did more good than harm. You can't say that about the yes! Nazis. What was the good bit? <laughs> or fail to deal with anti-Semitism in your party. These are things that are just not supported by British people and make you look bad. And even if accusations of anti-Semitism were exaggerated by the media, that doesn't change the perception. If Labour wants to win again and actually help working class people, they can't go as far left as Corbyn, but they also shouldn't sell out all their principles just to win, as Tony Blair did. Keir Starmer represents this balance. He supports taxing the rich, nationalizing the railways, abolishing tuition fees, a green industrial revolution, and rebuilding the welfare state. At the same time, he has gotten rid of some of the more unsavory people who were in the Corbynite camp. Number four is rediscovering patriotism. You see, there's a trend across the Western world of social democratic parties in decline. Whether it's the SPD in Germany, the Socialist Party in France, the Pave on the A in the Netherlands, and Labour in Britain. And a lot of this has to do with the working class shifting right because of increased salience of cultural issues over economic issues. You see, back in the day, if you were working class, you would vote Labour. End of story. If you were upper middle class, you would vote Conservative. But as the economy changed and people were lifted out of poverty, economic issues became less important. At the same time, and partially because of globalization, cultural issues like immigration, national identity, and the sense that everything was being run by the liberal elite in London came to the forefront. And this led to Brexit, and the Conservatives have managed to capitalise on that. In the last election, it was the Conservatives, not Labour, who won the working class vote, because those people are not that socially liberal and value their national identity. 
But because Labour is dominated by middle-class liberals who are cosmopolitan and don't care that much about patriotism or national identity, working-class voters are leaving the party. So Keir Starmer must adopt the approach of his rival, Lisa Nandy, who talked about progressive patriotism. The left should not allow the discussion about patriotism, national identity and immigration to be dominated by the right. Labour must embrace patriotism. And to do that, you can't have people on the left saying things like, the flag of England is racist, or that any concerns about immigration are necessarily xenophobic. Labour must reframe the discussion on their terms and appeal to voters who are left-wing economically but value national identity and are not on board with the latest liberal trends. Finally, number five, win back Scotland. <laughs> Look at this electoral map of Scotland from 2001. It's pretty red because Labour used to win big here. Now look at the map from 2019. Labour won just one seat in Scotland. It went from being the largest party in Scotland in 2010 to being fourth in 2019. And this is because of the rise of the Scottish National Party and the independence movement. And if you look at the polls, Support for Scottish independence is 50-50. But Keir Starmer has made a good move. He recently proposed creating a federal United Kingdom. You see, currently, Britain is very centralised. Although there are, of course, devolved regional parliaments in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. So what federalism would do is take this further. Britain would be divided into states, just like in the US or Germany with each region having more power to run local affairs. England itself would also be divided into different regions. Part of the reason why many Scottish people support the SNP is because they feel left behind. But by supporting a federal UK, some of the more moderate pro-independence people might be convinced to vote Labour and support federalism instead of full independence. Because without Scottish voters, it's very unlikely that Labour could win. And it would also help in Northern England, where people also feel left behind. If they could get their own regional government, that would help to reduce the feeling that everything is being run by out-of-touch Londoners. In short, Keir Starmer has his work cut out for him. He has four years to resurrect the Labour Party from the dead. To do that, he must move past Brexit present a new vision for a post-coronavirus Britain, make Labour more electable by not going too far left while still sticking to pro-worker values, embrace patriotism and win back Scotland so that he can win back the country. Tell me what you think, guys. If you like what you see, feel free to support us on Patreon. Like, share and subscribe. Because this was my take.